Hello. Thank you for joining me. I'm engrossed in my little bit of sewing here. So thank you for coming along tonight. Um, I'm just going to check um, login so I can see who's joining me tonight and if anyone's said in any comments or said hello or a wave. So bear with me. we go oh it's dawn hello dawn hello <laughs> isn't it amazing how um we can get so much expression in text now because that's what we do all the time isn't it so thank you for joining me so i'll just wait a few minutes see if anyone else comes along and what we're going to do tonight i'll just do a bit of an intro while we're waiting for a few people to come on but i know a lot of people watch later so if you're joining us later hello um so yeah, what we're going to do tonight is some EPP, uh, which is patchwork, English paper piecing, but it's patchwork. I'll come back to why it's called EPP. And I'm also going to show you, because I like to use the machine, my sewing machine, I'm going to show you a bit of quilting, because I've been working on a new design that I'm taking to Sewing Street in a couple of weeks. So I was, I'm, I just need to finish it off and do some quilting on that. So I thought, why not? We could do that together and then you can see how to quilt because the last time I was on Stone Street uh, Stuart Hillard and I were talking about how to quilt and we put a lot of um, effort in don't we to making the quilt and designing and colours and fabrics and then we come to quilt it and we might be a bit stuck so I'm going to do quite a bit of um, talking about quilting and how important that is so hello if you're just joining us thank you for coming along so let's make a start on English paper piecing and I was talking last week a little bit about my um, design that I've been working on, which is for my um, logo, so my logo for the business. But it could be any EPP project that you're working on. Um, and I want to show you right from the beginning how it starts and then how you build up to a design like this. So the reason it is called EPP, and I get a lot of people, especially at the um, when I go to the exhibitions, they'll say, why is it called EPP? What's EPP? I don't, I don't understand. So and when I was little, sewing hexagons together was just called patchwork and quilting. Um, and that's what, what it was called. Um, so what happened was, I don't know the history particularly. Are we all right for um, colour wise, Dave? Because the sun... The sun always shines, doesn't it, this time of night, so it can be a bit bright. So yeah, I'm not going to give you a history lesson because I don't know it. But all I do know is that in America, because America um, is very big on quilting and patchwork, they particularly liked the English way of doing it because we have a slightly different way of, of doing English paper, uh, patchwork paper piecing. So they called it English paper piecing to identify that it was the English method. So that's why it's now known as English paper piecing or EPP. Um, so if you see that, that's what it means. That's what I'm going to talk about today. But in my world, I just call it patchwork or quilting because it's just sewing tiny pieces of um, fabric together with a paper template behind them to give you the structure of the shape and then you sew them together and you end up with what used to be called as you know a patchwork quilt um, so it will be like this now i tend to work on with hexagons because come and have a look i'm gonna have a look i just love um the hexagon shape it's a traditional um epp or patchwork shape um, and obviously it's a it's a shape that tessellates so what that means it's like a tile it will match the same shape next to it and it will just repeat so I just prefer the hexagons but you could do all sorts of shapes squares pentagons a mixture of all of them diamonds are very popular so it's like a, a kite shape but you can also um um, you can you can even EPP um, with circles or half circles, semicircles. So there's no limit really on on how it works. So I'm going to show you this right from the beginning. So come back, come back, come back. So I've got my little. This is a must for me when I'm EPPing 
because I use my multi mat so I've got the ironing board here and I travel with this as well and then I've got my little um, cutting mat here and you can see if you look closely where all the little glue spots are because I then glue so there's a few processes to EPP and I'm going to start from the very beginning so what you need to do is you would start off with some hexagon shapes now I've deliberately showing you here my used hexagon templates so these start life in fact I haven't got a, I've got some plasters in my sewing box because I uh, had a bit of an accident with a needle the other day so I've put some plasters in there so these start off as brand new hexagons um, piece of card now I like to do I cut my own hexagons and I like them on 216 GSM that's the weight of the card so it's um it's thicker than paper but it's not a thick cardboard they look a bit cardboard because of the color i like a mix of colors um but you can see so it's quite bendy and flexible because i like to be able to pop it out of the shape and i'll show you that in a second but i find if they're paper templates they are a bit unstructured and a little bit um you know that they're, they're, they're not they're too flexible so what we're going to do you need to get some fabric now I like to use scrappy fabric as <coughs> excuse me as a rule but for this project so you can see you may have seen I put this on social media the other week um, just let me move that out of the way I did this pattern um, I just designed this to, to go with my logo so that's my logo DH and the elephant so because in real life this part of the logo is pink really bright pink and this part of the logo is a really quite dark blue, tearly blue. Um, and obviously you've got the dandelion here. This has a this is a photocopy. So I sat and, and drew this out of how I wanted it to be and then got my colouring pencils and coloured them in. You can see it's very, very rough, but that's just how I work. But yeah, the photocopier hasn't quite uh, picked up the colours here. So that was pink as well. And what I want to do is create the background so that it's the same colour as what the actual logo is really. And then this bit here, all the writing and the elephant itself, is I'm going to do free motion quilting. So when this is all finished, I'm going to use free motion quilting and just go over this shape because I'll draw it on here with a friction pen so that it erases away and so that the stitching is a top stitch on top and that will quilt the design okay with me so far and how i wanted this to be was i wanted the colors to pop behind the design so uh, you can see i i'd planned to use lots of different shades of pinks lots of different shades of blues and these are white i love white on white fabrics where you've got a white fabric got some here with the design on top also in white but i just think they're lovely they are they're my favorite fabrics to work with at the minute white on white absolutely lovely <clears throat> so i'll try and incorporate them in everything i do so what i'll do is show you just a simple um way of let me just move my pattern out of the way of creating a hexagon template and then one which is a bit more a bit more detailed now i do not like working with fabric that is creased uh, you can see this has literally just come out of the um my fabric box because that's i want you to see how just how i work it's just out the fabric box um there is a little bit of prep obviously with everything that you do but i want you to see it from scratch so I would press that out so it's nice and flat. Oh, that's the house phone ringing, if you can hear it. And what I'm going to do is take my hexagon template and you could either do this by using a ruler if you wanted to be more accurate, or I'm just going to eyeball a quarter of an inch seam around that hexagon shape. So I can freehand it, quarter inch seam around the shape like so and you can do that with the front or the back of the fabric doesn't really matter too much let's just move all these bits and bobs <clears throat> out of the way and then my multi mat 
I'm going to put, turn the fabric, you can see it's a scrappy hexi, doesn't have to be exact, and I'm going to place my card template on top of the fabric on the reverse side, on the wrong side of the fabric. And then I get my glue pen. I mean, you can baste these with um, stitches. I, I sort of cheat with my glue pen. I don't see it as cheating, I just think it's brilliant. I glue the card. I never glue the fabric because if I was to glue the fabric, can you see how that would stretch? And that cut there is on the bias. So if you have your fabric here, you've got the straight grain here and the, that straight grain going that way along parallel with the salvage edge. When you've cut on an angle like this, that is what's known as a bias cut. Now, can you see the stretch? There's no stretch at all there. But here, because I've cut across the bias, so all the grains of the fabric have been cut, they're really stretchy, look. So if you were to um, glue on the fabric, you'll stretch it. You can see that pulling and stretching, and you don't want that. So put the glue on the card and then fold. So you're pushing a little bit against that card because you do want this card to be covered in a nice, um, not taut, but it wants to be nicely covered, not baggy at all. So again, going over the um, card and then I just go all around the shape. Just pulling that fabric, I do it towards me after I've glued the card. And there is your covered card, okay? So that's a simple one where I've made no effort to make that particularly nice in terms of which way the fabric's going across the hexagon or anything like that. Now, if I wanted to use this fabric, so you can you see the really tiny little bees, um, then if I get a little bit of uh, one of my hexes, and the reason I'm showing you these, like I say, these are used so you can reuse them because the weight of the, of the card is quite heavy. It's You can see where I've stitched around the edge and I've glued on the back, look before, but I want to show you that you can reuse these. So they can seem expensive sometimes, or you can cut your own from card. Um, but of course, if you're reusing them, it makes it cheaper. So I'm going to make sure this time, because this fabric, it's, it is a pattern, and the bees are running in straight lines. So rather than them being a, a wonky like those dots are, I'm just going to cut this so that it's more straight to the hexagon edges. So it's a little bit like fussy cutting, but we're gonna come on to fussy cutting a bit more in a second. So again, I'm just lining the shape up. You could do this much more accurately if you felt you wanted to with a ruler. So you could get your ruler and add the quarter inch seam, but this is adequate. It's more than, more than sufficient for what we're doing. Fold the seams around, so glue. I normally glue clockwise, so that felt a little bit backwards to me. Glue your, your shape with your glue pen and fold it over. I love these tiny ones. These are three quarter inch hexagons. And you can see that those bees are nice and straight just because of the way, the direction that I, I place the fabric behind the hexagon before I cut it. Now, talking about sizes of hexagons. Um, so this is three quarters of an inch, okay? So you can see it's three quarters of an inch and I'll show you that because what how a hexagon is measured is along the edge, along the straight edge, okay? So three quarters of an inch. Now, because you may think, if I measured that here, look, that is from edge to edge, it's about an inch and a half. So if you see an inch and a half measurement, that's not what it is. The measurement for the hexagon is always the straight edge. So each of those straight edges is three quarters of an inch. So that's what you need when you're looking at sizes for hexes. Okay, so there's a couple. And then I want to show you another one, which is go I'm going to fussy cut, actually kind of cut. It's called fussy cutting. Um, and what we're gonna do is get the fabric and that needs lining again. So let's just cut that out roughly to start with. Just give it a little press. 
I love the detail of, of working with um, EPP and small hexagons. My favourite size is one and a quarter inch, but um, these little ones are so cute. So you can see this fabric, this is a nice Liberty fabric, little, little teapots and cups and saucers, it's so lovely. Oh, and a little sugar bowl there, look as well. So I want that um, teapot to be in the centre of my hexagon, okay? So what I'm going to do is take my hexagon and what you can do to, that will help you to, if you're not quite sure and you're, you're a bit unsure of placement, you can put a little bit of this glue on the fabric there or a little dot on the on the hexagon and place the hexagon so that it's over that picture that you wanted it to be of so it could be of anything if you whatever your fabric is place it so that it's over that main picture or that main design that you want to include in that hexagon I absolutely love fussy cutting, it's so satisfying. Uh, you do get a bit more waste because obviously for that piece I cut right into the centre of the fabric because I wanted that particular design. So it, you do get a bit more waste but I think it's worth it for the results if you want a particular piece of the design on your hexi. So there look, and that was just by eye. So the hexagon, um, the teapot is in the centre. What I do have, let me just reach across and get it. I do use these sometimes, which are hexagon, clear hexagon templates. So I use these for this, my design here. So let me grab this one. So you can see for this design, I've, I've done quite a lot of fussy cutting here. So I fussy cut this elephant I fussy cut this tie dye on this piece of batik fabric. I fussy cut the leaves here on this plant. And then I've done a sort of extra step of fussy cutting, if you like, that I've got three pieces here that join together like a jigsaw. So, you know, that I'll show you how I did that in a second. Um, so lots of fussy cutting for the umbrella, another umbrella here and so on. So I don't want to, because this is really special to me, this piece of work that I'm doing here, I wanted those, especially these bits here, to be exact. I need the pattern to match exactly. And that's where these clear hexagons come in. Absolutely brilliant. So they, this is just a pack, it's a so easy pack. Um, so can you see, that's a really big three inch hexagon. You can see there, look, that it says three inch that's the measurement and I like to use the smallest one of course here it is let me just check this is the right size yeah so this is the three quarter of an inch hexi so if I was fussy cutting a piece of this let's have a look let's just press this out slightly I like to um, get up in the morning and you know when you wake up sometimes a little bit early so it could be four o'clock silly o'clock early or even sort of half five and you just think oh, I'm not quite ready to get up yet I love to come in here come in my sewing room and do this I absolutely love it it's so therapeutic so relaxing it's lovely and what I'm going to do I'm just looking for a little pen so it doesn't have to be a um, friction pen here. And what I'm gonna do with my template, so I've got the fabric right side facing, we're not using the back, because I really want to see the pictures. And choose a design that you want. So I'm gonna go, although the cupcakes are very appealing, I'm liking that jammy dodger there in the center, can you see? And what I'm gonna do is line that jammy dodger up. Can you see how, because I've got this clear template, it's so much easier than doing that because I don't know where the centre of that one is because I can't see. So if I place my hexagon exactly where I want it, now remember, if you do buy these, they're ever so good, it shows you here, look, let me show you, you might have to come over, Dave, over the top for this one. So on the hexi, you've got these little holes and what they are showing you is the edge, the corners 
are the angles of that hexagon can you see so that is the size that it will be but the actual template is added as has added that quarter inch seam okay so i'm going to draw like i say this isn't a friction pen it's just a normal little felt tip pen because that shape is going to be that those edges are going to be behind that's just my template to cut the shape out so i can cut that out with my scissors you could use your rotary cutter but i love scissors i have to say love my rotary cutter for big cuts uh, with a ruler but for anything else i'm a scissor girl so there's your hexagon you can see how much neater that is than the one i previously did just by by eye turn that over get your hexagon template place it in the center now that's that's not as hard as it might sound because you can see the quarter of inch seam all the way around and then do exactly the same fold it over push your quarter inch seam over like so and you've got your finished hexi which is lovely lovely and neat and there's your little jammy dodger look where you wanted it with all your little cupcakes around it and you can see then how just those few that i've done to show you how they all then nest together to make a little shape or whatever or you could do them as a row always reminds me of blockbusters if you remember watching that so <clears throat> what we're going to do now um, is i'm going to show you how i sew them together now this week has been a funny old week i've done it again look i've lost needles don't ask me why they just seem to disappear I don't know why I, don't, I can't give you the answer to that it's strange I'll be sewing away and then it'll just cut, slip out my hand and it disappears and it's just happened tonight so I've got my thread and I always when I'm when I'm doing EPP I always have this um, thread magic or some people use beeswax so that you it conditions the thread because otherwise see how this thread here is all sort of tangly look it gets tangled and knotted and wants to mess around with itself so if you put the thread through your thread magic pull it i just always i generally use a white thread or cream or light gray so pull your thread through and what that what let me show you underneath what that is it's like a lip balm so it's a little bit like vaseline so it's yeah it's just like vaseline and you put your thread over it i just find this invaluable put your thread over it put your lid on so it stops it drying out and then every single time i use thread rather than pull it off the off the uh, bobbin i'll just pull it through there because then it's coating it really lightly it's not heavy at all it's not it's not vaseline it just looks a little bit like it and that then stops that thread from where's the new thread i've just cut there oh god you must have this problem as well it just disappears it's just more silky and it won't tangle around itself because it's it's got that sort of coating on it but it's a nice coating excuse this blooming plaster on my thumb the other night i was uh sitting at the machine making a quilt and i've never ever done it before but the automatic thread cutter on my machine is, is not working and uh I went to grab the, the quilt, oh, caught my finger under the needle, oh my goodness, I've never done it before. So that's what that's for, so apologies. So here we're going to do the, now the sewing. So take two of your hexes, you just sew in two together at a time. And what you do, because these have been fussy cut, so it's obviously important where you place them, because I want them to be the right way up, I don't want an upside down tip up. I'm going to put them where I want them and then fold them right sides together along that edge of that shape. Now what you can do, and I've got them here, look, my little quilting clips, you can pop a little quilting clip and if I'm going to use a quilting clip, I'll tell a lie, I always put it to the left of the seam I'm going to sew. So if the phone rang or something or I got disturbed, I know that that's the seam I'm going to sew because I've put my clip here. And then we're going to start, I always sew away from me 
but I'm not overly, well, I say that, I'm not overly precious really. Sometimes I'll sew away, sometimes I'll sew towards. So let's come towards me because it'll be easier for you to see that way. So I'm going to start right in the corner on that um, angled edge. Take the thread through. I did put a knot in the end and then I'm going to take the needle. You're taking it through just a few threads of the first shape and a few threads of the second shape and you're taking the needle through the fabric not through the card now it will catch the card you can see on this one here look but that's fine it will because you've wrapped that fabric round quite tight but you only need to catch the fabric so I've gone through once I'm going to go through pretty much that same spot still very much in the corner and I'm going to secure it with a slip stitch there slip knot so that that is nice and tight because if you think about your design if this was good i mean this is going to be a wall hanging so it's slightly different but if that was a quilt there's going to be stress on those joins that y seam if you like because it looks like a letter y so i always double secure each angled corner and then you just do a little slip stitch over the top of that seam so with them still facing together, you then just carry on and I'm doing these stitches as small and as close together as I can because the smaller they are, the closer together they are, the finer they are, then the less, less obvious they'll be once your design is finished. Having said that, I actually quite like a little bit of seeing the stitches because when I've spent all this time hand sewing, I don't mind people seeing the stitches on the other side, but I'll show you them in two seconds. So we've got to the end. I'm gonna take my needle through that stitch again to secure because I've reached that angled edge. Take my clip off and then you open it up. And there, you can just see those little stitches. But like I say, I quite like it that you can see them because it shows that it's hand stitched. Okay, so that's the first two sewn together. And then I'll take my next shape. Now, when I'm sewing, this is how I like to do it. So I imagine that that is the center now. Imagine, because they're in flower shapes. So what I mean by that is there's usually one center and then there's six hexagons around the edge. So to me, I picture that as a flower. So there's one center, six around the edge. And that's how I tend to sew them together. So I've got my thread there on that corner. I'm going to start my next piecing together up here. So I'm just going to take my needle with my thread and I'm just going to do a very little, well, it doesn't have to be that tiny, running stitch up to that corner because I want my needle and thread there. So you could knot off and start again, but why bother? Just do a little running stitch up the inside on the reverse. And then we're going to do exactly the same. Place those two hexes together, line them up so they're nice and exact. I'm not going to use a clip here. And then I'm going to take the thread through the blue and my plaster, through the blue hexagon, slip it through so it's nice and tight and secure, and then carry on. I'm sewing myself to this one. It's blooming plaster. Have we had any messages, Dave, that you can You've see? Had a few messages, yeah. Oh, do I need to talk to people? Oh, maybe. Let me just let me just finish this bit, this seam, and then I'll have a look at my computer so I can see the messages. So I'm going down this seam, get to the end again. I'm not knotting off, but I'm just pulling that through, slipping my needle through to give that a nice tight secure knot this is where people get a little bit stuck because then you might think well Debbie how how am I going to sew them together easy peasy you fold this one in half remember they're just paper really thin card so that's really pliable you fold that in half and then that allows these two to nest together so again I'm going to take my needle through through the loop so that it gives it a nice secure knot and then go across this seam. I absolutely love doing this. It is, I mean I don't like to use the word painstaking, that's not how I see it, 
but I know a lot of people have said, Debbie, that's painstaking, isn't it? Have you got the patience to do that? I don't see it like that. I, abs I sit for hours in an evening uh, designing new patterns, um, all sorts of things. You can see I'm doing this logo at the minute, doing quilts, doing cushion covers. I could just, I do it every night. My hands are, aren't so good these days. They ache a lot when I do it so, a lot, which let me down. And then take the thread back up through there. And this time I'm gonna knock that off because you can see I've not got much thread left. So what I'm gonna do is just go back over about half an inch back in, do a final th up through the thread to knock that off. And then usually I'd have my little scissors, I've got my big fabric scissors, and snip that off. And there <coughs> is the start of your flower. So again, that's my center one, and then there are the two around the edge. So if I was to do my next one, I would then get my bees, I'd line them up however I wanted them, and I would sew down here, this seam, and then here. That's how I do it. So it's like an L shape. The direction I go in is an L shape. That's what I'm more comfortable with. There's no right and wrong way of doing this at all. It's all about how um, you feel comfortable, what you're comfortable with, and what you're comfortable doing. And then you can see how it actually soon grows. I mean, yes, there's a lot of time spent there, but it does soon grow. You'll be surprised. I've just sewn three together in, in a short time, really. Now, when you do start to see it grow, what you can then do is take out the cardboard templates. So you can see here, I've left some in so I can show you. I leave all the outside templates in. So the only cardboard templates I take out, so you can see I, I love doing this, is you just pull the fabric gently, don't, you know, sort of pull it, and the glue just allows it to temporarily stick, really, and then you just pull your hexi out. So I can use that again, because there's nothing wrong with it, and it's left that shape look, absolute perfect structure, because that card was in it. But as soon as I, I'm one of those people, my friend um, was showing me her, um, she's done a Pasaglia, uh, what is it, Pasaglia? I can never remember the name, you know, the big cog um, EPP designs. It's amazing. She was showing me that the other week and um, she leaves all the cardboard templates in, the whole thing. She's got quite a few sections ready to piece together. She leaves them all in, whereas I, I like to take them out because I like the flexibility then of that then just becomes fabric rather than being um, sort of more firm with your, with your templates in. Again, personal preference. As long as that shape, so I'm taking this one out here, that's been surrounded by all the other shapes so it's nice and secure, it won't lose its shape. So as long as it's secure by others, I take them out. Again, that's just my preference. Now, when your hexagons get a little bit tired, because they will, and you will need to replace them, you might find, say that one, it's not doing it, like there, it's a little bit torn. So when I know that that's a little bit tired, because you can see how it's been folded and folded with doing all the different backwards and forwards and shapes, then when you think that that's tired and it's lost its shape, you can just throw them out and have some new ones. And you can either make these yourself with a, a hexagon, uh, like a hole punch, uh, or you can buy the templates. Um, I do have these hexagons uh, available on the website um, in that particular, like I say, this strength of card, because that's everything I sell, as I've said before, is what I use and that's what I find the best. And then you have your lovely design. Now, let me quickly check. Um, I'm gonna have to just log in again. Look, it wants my password, so bear with. See my password there, did you, everyone? Everyone's hacking into my uh, Facebook account. Let's have a look. Got a few comments. Need to go, we'll watch later as I'm wanting to try this. Okay, Jackie, yeah, I hope you catch up. And if you have any questions later, then message me. That's absolutely fine. Catherine, good evening. Thank you for the pincushion. Received it today. Oh, can't wait to get started. That's lovely. That's the um, pincushion. Uh, pattern. This has 
flown out this week. I'll come back to that. I'll come back to that. Uh, even Debbie just making bolognese. Well, bolognese, what time are we coming round, Jackie? We're having fish and chips tonight. <laughs> so bolognese, how lovely. Oh, how lovely. Thank you for messaging it. I love it. Uh, it's like having you in the sewing room. Or am I in your sewing room or kitchen even? Could be anywhere, couldn't I? Anyway, let's, so are we all okay with EPP before I finish that? What I will say is, and I haven't got one with me, but I have got this, is this week's Star Buy is the Hexi Pincushion. So this uh, is a new pattern that I, I bought. So it's got the blue Hexi pattern on the, on the top, the red Hexes, so it's a reversible one on the bottom. And then I've got a mixture of the floral design fabric here. Um, and that pattern this week is $2.99. Normally that is $4.99. That is our star buy at $2.99. So it's an absolute, sorry, snip. Couldn't resist. Um, so yeah, that's on offer this week, $2.99 for a printed pattern. All colour photographs, step by step how to do it. And it's all EPP. So you can do it exactly as I've just shown you. And the other thing, a little tip I will give you for this, and I do it with all my pin cushions. This is my absolute favorite. Look at this tatty old thing. The, I love this that I made. Put in your pin cushion crushed walnut shells because they are nice and give it some weight. So it's a little bit like a bean bag. You know, when you were at school, you used to have little bean bags. They're very fine though. They're nicely crushed. Um, and what the walnut shells do is they sharpen your pins. So every time you put a pin in, the, the sort of friction it uh, has between the walnut shells sharpens your pins. So all, always do that. I always buy them. You can get those online. I might get some in actually, because I, I, tell, I tell people to buy them all the time. So I will get some in. And what I like about this Hexi one is it makes it quite heavy because it's got the... Uh, the walnut shells in. Imagine if that was just full of uh, stuff in, it'd be quite light where you can feel, you see how that's quite quite heavy. So that's this week's Star Buy, which is online now. Um, if you, I'll quickly, quickly tell you this and then I'll show you a little bit of sewing on the machine as well. Um, if you subscribe to our newsletter on our website, you also are entitled to 10% off. Now I've sent an email out today to everyone who's already subscribed when you subscribe you know that this website's a bit new so we're just getting used to it um i've sent i've set up now an email so that if you subscribe to the web, the website you'll get a code which you can use for every purchase you make online um for 10 percent off but you'll need to subscribe to get that code and then you just put that in the checkout the coupon bit at the checkout so that's available for you as well because i just want to bring you more and more projects uh, and I, you know, just share everything that I do with you because then sitting in front of the TV doing this all night is, is worth it because, you know, you're enjoying it as much as I do. So that's that. Any more questions EPP wise, Dave? Have you seen any? No. No, we're no, okay, no I think. Yeah. No questions. But if you have any questions, please just get in touch. Let me know. Um, okay. So a new design I've been working on that is actually coming or I'm taking to Sewing Street the next time I'm on, which is Sunday the 22nd of May, is I'm not going to show you too much. It's a bit of a sneak peek tonight because I don't want to give it all away, but it's a big heck. You know I love my hexes. This is a big hexy design. I'm so excited about it. Um, and I've made this quilt. I've written the pattern. That's at the printers today. Um, so that will be coming back next week. It's ready for you guys a uh, week on Sunday. And, um, but I wanted to show you my quilting of it because I've made the quilt, it's all done. It's not EPP, it's actually sewn, which is even better because hexagons to sew with a sewing machine are just renowned for being quite difficult because you've got that Y seam. You know the Y seam I was talking about here? It's, you know, it's quite tricky to get that under your machine. You can, you can do it, but it's a bit tricky. So the new quilt I've made is a quick and easy way to do quite large hexes, although you could do them smaller. Um, and it, it's just, I'm so pleased with it. I hope you love it too. So what I'm gonna to show you tonight was, is how to, I'm gonna do some quilting 
in a hexagon shape and just talk a little bit about quilting and how to decide what to do with your quilts, what design to use and that kind of thing. So let me grab my quilt, but don't look at it too much because this is just a sneak peek. I'm just going to turn the iron off before I uh, pull that over and uh, do another injury. Right, Dave, are we coming over here? So <clears throat> let me move all my bits and bobs. This is Malachy Tin Lot with all my EPP things in. I like to have it organised. Now, I better move that because the sewing will knock it off. So, to the machine. And I'm going to... You can see I've already on my machine, because you know I like to talk about the settings. I've already put on mine, has got an automatic, not automatic, but built-in walking foot. So I just have to pull that down and that's the walking foot on. If you've got that, put it down if you're doing quilting or if you've got a separate attachment, then you just clip that on. Usually you have to just get your screwdriver and fix it on the back. The reason we have a walking foot is, if you don't know, you see under here, you've got your feed dogs. So these feed dogs here are little teeth that pull the fabric underneath the foot so as you're sewing it just pulls the fabric along gently you don't even know it's there most of the time what this walking foot does is it gives feed dogs underneath here so it's also pulling the fabric from the top now if you're just sewing a normal piece of fabric like this let's say so if you're just sewing that, it's one piece of fabric. So there's no problem with that going through the machine. It just feeds it through even without that. So if I take that off, exactly the same because it's just one layer of fabric. So the machine, any machine should eat that up. Shouldn't be a problem at all. However, when you're quilting, when you're doing a quilt, you've got some weight in your fabric. So let me, let me organise this quilt because it's quite big. So you can see the hexy look. Ooh, I love this. I'm so pleased that I hope you love it too. Um, so what you've got here, you've got the front fabric, you've got the wadding, I've used H640, and you've got the backing fabric. This again, look, the white on white because you know I love it. So if you think about what's going under that machine, Hang on, my threads have got tangled there. What's going under that machine are maybe here, three layers of fabric. If you think about this piece of fabric here, this is a seam. Let me show you this one. It's a bit of loose thread there, look. Let me get that while I see it. So the, under here, there's a seam allowance. So there's two pieces of fabric, the wadding and the fabric underneath. So three pieces of fabric and the, and the wadding. So if I am sewing that, put my foot down, without that walking foot, the feed dogs underneath are gonna pull that fabric through, which is absolutely fine. But what will happen is it'll pull the bottom fabric through quicker, only slightly, than the top, because the top one's sort of here and that bottom one's getting fed through. And because of all the layers, even though they're fused together, they will slightly move. They'll get a bit of distortion in there. So with that walking foot down, my foot just came up automatically when it adjusted for that walking foot. What that now does, feeding the fabric through together like that. So it's taking the bottom fabric with the wadding and the top layer through all at the same time. So that was quite a long lesson on why walking foots are important but i do think they are important when you're quilting if you haven't got one then it's not the end of the world don't you know don't have to rush out and buy one but if you have and you don't use it then i would i would so i'm gonna on my settings i'll tell you you don't have to come over here so i'm just doing a straight stitch i am going to have the needle position you'll see my needle move across because at the minute that is set for a quarter inch so I'm going to take that back to a regular stitch. So it's sewing right in the middle of my foot. And when I'm doing a top stitch, I take my stitch length up to 3.4 I'm doing today. Because this is quite thick. 
I'm, I've just extended it just slightly. A normal stitch that I would use for the seams would be 2.4, so I've gone up to a 3.4. Okay, so I'm going to begin. What I'm going to do, I've, I've got these three layers of hexes, as you can see. I've already stitched in the ditch around the centre hexy, so that means I've gone right in between those seams. This time, I'm just going to use the width of my foot, so my foot is going right along that seam there, in between the pink dotty and the white. And then what will happen is, I'm not then looking at this needle as it's sewing, I'm looking at the side of this foot that's running parallel with this seam. And that will give me then a nice straight edge. So try not to get distracted with the needle, especially if you're new to sewing, just focus on the side of the foot. I'm going to do a reverse stitch at the beginning because I haven't got my automatic lock stitch on. And then I'm going to go quite slow, you don't have to go mad. And I'm going to sew right up to that next seam. So because it's a hexy, you can see it's, this is a 60 degree angle. I've gone right up to that seam here. I'm going to lift my foot, pivot. So I've got my needle down. I've set my machine so the needle is down. And then take my foot back down and continue to sew. And you can see that with that walking foot down, it's feeding that fabric top, bottom and the wadding, just lovely. Foot up. Now, when you see all these beautiful quilts at the um, shows, you think, gosh, they've not pushed that quilt, have they, through the throat of their machine? And yes, they have. That's what you have to do. So don't be frightened of this, just push it out the way. You could roll it up and make a bit of a neater job of it. But to be honest, when I'm quilting, especially when I'm you know, in here on a roll, I'm not really worried about this. I'm just looking at what I'm doing here, which is keeping that foot along the edge of that seam running parallel, which will give me a nice straight line. Needle down, foot up, pivot your fabric round, needle down, uh, foot down, sorry, and go again and I'm going round in this way until I reach back to the beginning. And I just wanted to show you what it's like quilting a big quilt. Maybe you've already done it, maybe you've done lots. But this is the reality of having a big quilt and what it's like. Now, when I've got this here, I've not got a big enough table to have my big extended foot here, um, table here. I wish I had, I wish I'd got a bigger room but I can only use my normal table. So what I do is I, I've got a table here, a little sewing table, that I would normally throw that quilt on to take the weight of it, because otherwise it, the, it'll drag, Gra gravity will drag it down. So again, don't be afraid to sort of throw it around. As long as you're looking after it, you know, don't get me wrong. I love my quilts and respect it, but you're just worried about what's going under under the needle. Foot down, go to that beginning again, reverse stitch at the end so it locks it, and then finish. Needle up, foot up, and we're away. And there you can see I've just done a little echo quilt of that hexagon. And what I intend to do, because this quilt's full of uh, hexes. I'm going to just quilt in the same way, echo quilt all around those hexagons just in that centre piece. So there's three parts to each of the hexes and I'm just going to quilt that centre one. So that's just a little bit of an insight to um, quilting, actually quilting as we move back round. Um, <clears throat> a bigger piece because as I mentioned earlier you know when you're working with smaller pieces like this I will quilt this in exactly the same way and I'll, I'll show you this in a few weeks time when I've finished it how I'm just going to do that with three motion but it's exactly the same process except obviously you take the foot off with that but whether you're quilting this or a big quilt just concentrate on the bit that's under the machine that's my advice let me just double check because we're almost out of time. Let me just see if I've had any new messages. 
<laughs> thank you so much for joining me tonight um oh don't think so have you seen any more dave no, no. i think i've frozen so that's it one thing i wanted to say was tomorrow me and dave are heading across to melbourne or down to melbourne it's quite south from here um to the quilt show it's quilt uk we're going to the melbourne show this is the first time that we're exhibiting there so everything's packed everything's ready all my bits and bobs anything i've used here tonight they're going in the van with this uh we're heading down traveling down tomorrow and the show starts on thursday until sunday this week so if you're around uh this weekend or you're already going you've already got tickets then please come and see us because we just love seeing you at the shows that you know that's what it's all about i spend like you do a lot of time in my sewing room on my own and it's all totally worth it but there's nothing better for me than being with you tonight and seeing you all at the shows i've not got any workshops this time but i'm actually quite pleased about that because it's time for me to just be on the stall and be with people and meet you all and and you know just talk about all things sewing and of course we I will, i'll just pick up on this because one of the ladies said she bought the pattern for this this is available online i was so desperate to get it ready for you for the show in melvin which i did it's been non-stop sewing here this last three weeks um so there's a pattern to show you how to make the base which um is is quite easy don't be put off by it make the base sew this machine it's only three parts to it to sew together fill it decorate it um i've even got some little bobbins that you can buy for the top nice big button on the back how lovely is that and it's a pin cushion so we've got some ready-made ones i haven't made the ready-made ones i've i've used this as inspiration well this is my design but i've used um, a pin cushion we sell anyway as inspiration because everyone who i saw at the nec recently was like debbie you need to do a pattern for this because we love it so i've done it so if you're after one they're available online or if you're around uh, this week at the moment show we'll take a few there i've got some kits available for these literally i think there's two left um in fact there might only be one there's only one that's got the pattern and just a fat quarter of this lovely fabric but you can get i think there's again one or two fat quarters of this this is the makawa uh, stitch in time fabric that came out well i don't know three years ago maybe now they just brought out a new range which i'm going to get in stock when we come back from the show i struggled to get this about a month ago in at the nec managed to get the last two meters that um they had at fabrics galore um so if you want to grab some of that i've literally got some on the website and like i say there's one or two kits left um, but the kit only has a fat quarter in, not the whole shebang. But the pattern is there, the pattern for the base, the pattern for the sewing machine, everything. And full colour photos, uh, because I just like to hold your hand as if I'm with you in the sewing room when you're making these things. So, I've loved tonight. Thank you so much for joining me. Or if you're catching up later, thank you for watching later, because we know that, you know, time's precious. Uh, if I can help you with your sewing journey, then absolutely brilliant. Don't forget to subscribe to the newsletter on our website. Also subscribe on YouTube. I will be putting some new tutorials on there when we have a little bit of a break from these shows, but they took priority for a few weeks and months. And I shall see you next Tuesday. Lots of information about the show. Uh, lots of hellos, I hope, from having seen some of you there. And obviously a new star buy. But this week's star buy, the Hexi Pincushion. Don't forget. Here it is. Now you've had your EPP tutorial. Easy peasy. And I cannot wait to see what you do with yours and all the different designs. You can have that done by next week, I reckon, if you order the pattern today. Anyway, thanks again. And I will see you soon. Take care, everyone. Bye.